<laughs> good, good morning, boys and girls. Today we're going to be continuing with our story of Moses. Last week, Miss Suzanne brought us more of the story of Moses. She talked about the plagues that were sent down to Egypt by God. And can anybody tell me what those plagues were? I'll let you think about it. Maybe you can get in there and type them in real quick before I mention them all. Well, we had water turning to blood. We had frogs and lice and flies and livestock that was diseased and dying. Boils and hail and locusts and darkness. And then the biggest one of all, the killing of the firstborn children. These are all found in what book of the Bible? What book of the Bible are we in now? We're in Exodus. And they are from Exodus 7, 14 through 11, 6. Well, with this last one, the killing of the firstborn, that's where we instituted Passover. In order for the firstborn children not to die in households, God told Moses to have them take blood of the lamb and put it over the doorposts and down the sides of the doorposts. So when the death angel came, it knew to pass over that house. And at midnight, the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, all the way from the animals to the house of the Pharaoh. Then the Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron, and he told all the children of Israel to get out. Take your flocks, take your herds, and be gone. All the Egyptians urged the Israelites to leave quickly. And they left. So Moses and Aaron led the people, millions of people, out of Egypt and into the wilderness of the Red Sea. God then hardened Pharaoh's heart even more so that he would take his army and go after the Israelites. Now think about that. God hardened his heart even more so he would pursue the Israelites and chase them down. Well, we're going to find out why in just a moment. The Israelites, well, here they are trapped by the Red Sea. And they can see the dust clouds of Pharaoh's army coming. Well, the people started to complain. And when God told Moses to lift up his rod that he carries and stretch his hands out over the sea, he divided it. The Israelites were able to cross the Red Sea on dry land. Now think about that when you go to the beach, dig a hole in the sand by the water, the water keeps filling in, keeps filling in. There's no way to get to dry land. Well, the people passed through the center of the Red Sea on dry land. The Lord caused the sea to go back after every Israelite had crossed. And all the Egyptian army was in the Red Sea on the dry land. And the water comes back and they all perished. That's why God hardened his, the Pharaoh's heart and had him chase after the Israelites so he can show them once and for all, I am God. Well, now as Moses brought the Israelites from the Red Sea, they began to sing praises to God. They had songs that they wrote. Moses actually wrote a song and they sang these praises to God. Then they went into the wilderness of Shur. And after only three days, they found that the water was bitter. They couldn't drink it. Well, we're going to have a common theme here. And then the people complained. God showed Moses a tree to cut and throw into the water and to make it sweet. And God told the people to follow him and his laws, and they would prosper. They traveled to Elam, where there were 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees, and they camped by the waters. Well, they began to travel again because they're still out in the wilderness. And on the 15th day of the second month, so after they'd been out there, after they had departed Egypt, they'd only been out there for about 45 days now. Well, guess what? The people began to complain. They wished that they were slaves back in Egypt so their bellies were full and they didn't have to search for their own food. Well, the Lord again heard their cries and sent bread from heaven. Every morning they would get up and as the dew dried, there was the bread. The Lord heard them 
Oh, let me back up. Well, and then the people began to do what? They began to complain. Now they needed meat. And the Lord heard them and he sent quail. So every evening the quail would come in. They had quail to eat for meat. And every morning was bread that they had to gather. Now the people gathered, they ate, they drank, and they rested according to the laws. And it's time to travel again. They pack up camp and they head out. They found no water. But guess what the people did? They began to complain again. The Lord told, told Moses to strike the rock with his rod and the Lord made water to come out of the rock. Boys and girls, <clears throat> one of the main themes here that the Israelites did here in Exodus, what did they do a lot of? They complained. We hear it over and over again. The people complained about everything, and the Lord heard all their complaints, and he took care of them. Well, they still thought they'd rather go back to being slaves instead of being grateful to God for getting them out of Egypt. And they were not talking to God. They were taking their complaints to Moses. Moses spoke to God. God gave the people what they needed. But you know what? We don't have to do that. We don't have to talk to a priest, a preacher, a pastor, a mom and dad. It's great to talk to our mom and dad, but when we want to talk to God, we can talk directly to God. When we pray, we are praying to God. And I want to teach you something that uh, might make it easier to remember how to pray to God. <clears throat> begins with a very small word, the word joy. First letter of joy, J. What do you think that stands for? Something very important, J. How about Jesus? Talk to Jesus. Thank him for everything that he has done for you. Let him know that you understand that he is our God, that he is our leader, our healer, and he loves us. The second letter in joy is O. Others, bring prayers and needs for others to Jesus. So we thank God for who he is. We thank Jesus. Then we bring other people to him. And our last letter in the word joy is Y. Stands for you, yourself. Bring your needs to Jesus. And at the end, we pray in Jesus' name. Boys and girls, I love talking to you. I love seeing you on Thursdays. I want to end today with a prayer. Let's go ahead and take this prayer to our Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for allowing us to love him, for allowing us to be loved by him. Lord, we thank you for providing our homes, our families, and our mothers on this Mother's Day. Lord, we appreciate everything you do, and we ask for forgiveness where we fall short. Lord, we have a church prayer list of people who are ill, people who need you, people who don't know you, and Lord, we bring them and we lay them at your feet. Lord, that the others in our lives, our parents are healthy, our grandparents. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters. Lord, we pray for those in this world who don't know you. And Lord, we ask that you get us out of this virus, that you protect us, and you bless this nation. Lord, in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Boys and girls, it has been great talking to you again this morning, and hopefully we will be back together soon. I love you. You have a wonderful day and happy. Make sure you say happy Mother's Day to your mamas.